Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us get into the module 5 of basic electronics and communication subject. In this video, I am going to cover cellular telephone system, cellular concept, frequency reuse and reduction of interference. Let us look into the history of cellular telephone system. The key principle of the cellular telephone which is provided in 1947 by the researchers of Bell Telephone Laboratory as well as some other telephone companies. The first telephone conversation is on 1973 by a Motorola researcher. And then cellular companies or the telephone companies aim to cover the large geographical area that is the challenge at that time. So they have divided the large geographic area into cells and the concept of frequency reuse is used to cover the large geographic area. And initially they will be having the minimal infrastructure that is the less antenna sites we can say. And nowadays we will be having the large infrastructure and number of base stations are huge and covering the large area and also providing the service quality. And wireless telephone system is going to be categorized into five generations. 1G that covers only the analog voice and 2G where we get the facility of sending the text or SMS what we call and in 3G we are going to get the video calling facility and also in 4G that video calling facility has improved to the conference calls and all and then in 5G we will be having a high data rate and low latency and we will be having a high speed internet connection also and call over internet also the facility provided nowadays. So let us understand the cellular telephone system and then we can look into the advanced systems later. What is a cellular telephone system? Generally a cellular telephone system will be having a mobile station that will be the mobile handset what we say and this mobile station will be communicating through a base station base station in the sense generally what we call it as a tower and this hexagonal structure what we see here will be a cell it is consisting of a single base station and this single base station is going to handle multiple mobile stations and this cell covers from 5 to 20 kilometers it will be having a single base station in it that will be having an antenna which is controlled by a small office and these base stations will be handling the different mobile stations will be connected to a mobile switching center that will be called as a central hub that is MSC. This MSC will also be having a switching office we call it as a switching center and then it is connected to a PSTN that is public switch telephone network. This PSTN is a combination of telephone networks, uh, similar MSCs we can connect to this PSTN and also a different switching centers and also fiber optic cables we can say or a wired cable connection to a stationary phone will be connected to a PSTN. This is the schematic diagram of a cellular telephone system. And what is the concept of this cellular telephone system we need to understand. In the earlier days, they are going to use the high power transmitters and that is the antenna mounted on the tall tower to cover the large areas. This will give the good coverage but the difficulty here is that the reuse of frequencies is not possible and the network capacity becomes low. So as demand for the mobile service increased means the number of users increased achieving the high network capacity by using the same radio spectrum was more important than covering the large areas. So number of users increases, the cellular provider need to provide the frequencies, different frequencies for different communications without any interference. So here the radio spectrum is very much important than covering the large areas. That's why the macro cells at the initial stage reduce to small cells and then fimato cells as the coverage area reduced and the number of cell size reduces. So we need to understand what is a cell. The geographic area is divided into number of smaller service areas. So here is the hexagonal structure will be called as a cell. And these group of cells will be called as clusters. You can see here the group of cells in the sense some 6 to 7 cells will be grouped and that will be called as a cluster. You can see here 7 cells will be grouped into a cluster. And here in the cluster what we can do two clusters can be having a same set of frequencies. Cluster to cluster we can use the frequency reuse concept. 
So the high power transmitter is replaced by the low power transmitters here since the area coverage reduces to SL and the small portion of the service area covering the number of users within the same cell and the cluster size is also not fixed. The cluster size may vary as the number of users present in that particular cell or the cluster and depending on the network capacity as well as the traffic the cells are going to be grouped into clusters and the frequencies will be assigned to them and we need to understand the frequency reuse concept frequency reuse is the concept of cellular mobile radio system where the total available channels let me consider we will be having thousand channels means thousand frequencies different frequencies we need to divide these thousand frequencies into number of channel sets a set of 10 we can consider set of 10 will be assigned to one particular cell the next set of frequencies will be assigned to the second cell similarly all the different cells in a cluster will be allocated with a set of channels and this channel set is assigned to a particular cell will be different from the next cell means cell 1 will be having a set of frequencies cell 2 will be having different set of frequencies cell 5 will be having different set of frequencies the available set will be divided into group and will be assigned to the different cells in a cell in a cluster and one cluster to other cluster you can observe here a b c d e f g are the cells in cluster 1 let me call this as cluster 2 let me call this as cluster 3 in these three clusters we can find the same name a here so the cell with named a can use the same set of frequencies that will be called as a frequency reuse cells with the same alphabet we can consider here in this diagram using the same channel set and the same set of channels can be reused in the other cell if the cell is satisfying the reusing criteria that is distance d what is distance d here means d will be depending on the number n that is the frequency reuse pattern n is equal to 7 in our case why because we will be having 7 cells in one cluster in cluster 1 we will be having 7 cells so n becomes 7 what is r here here r is the radius of a particular cell so d becomes the minimum distance between the center of cells that use the same frequency band that is what the reuse distance d this need to be satisfied to use the frequencies in multiple cells and one more d here we will be having representing with a small d that is distance between the two adjacent cells if we call it as adjacent cell it means the neighboring cell so neighboring cell can't use the same frequencies the difference different frequencies will be allocated but the neighboring cluster cells can be used the same set of frequencies that will be a concept of frequency reuse and then reduction in interference here with respect to the frequency of the channel is considered reusing the identical frequencies means reusing the same frequencies in the different cells is limited by this interference between the cells so to avoid that interference what we are supposed to do means we need to keep the cells with a sufficient distance means we need to assign the same frequencies to the different cells with a sufficient distance by satisfying this reuse criteria that is distance d and another way of controlling this co-channel interference is that using directional antennas at the base station means that will be called as cell sectoring in a single cell we can divide the antenna coverage into different sectors you can see over here in this diagram single cell will be having a 60 degree cell sectoring here we will be having six sectors where the directional antenna is going to cover the particular sector. Similarly, we can group into 120 degree cell sectoring also. Adjacent cell interference can also occur due to the overlapping in between the two neighboring cells. It can be avoided by filtering the signals to be received and also the proper separation between the adjacent cells can also reduce the adjacent cell interference. In the next video, let us see the basic operation of a cellular network in between the two mobile phones how actually the communication will be and the mobility management. Thank you.